girls, welcome to the World Storytelling Cafe. And it is Tuesday. And it is our Young International Tellers Night. And we have tellers from everywhere tonight. So, we're going to start, I think, with... with we'll, we'll start with Erica. Then we'll go to Princess D. Then we'll go to Patricia. And then we'll go to Nigeria. Then we'll go to Elsa. And remember what I've just said. I've got Phil in the way for him. I'm just going to let her in. There we go. So, who did I say was going to start? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I wish to say something. May I? Yes, you may. Hello, Baba C. Hello, David. It's been so long. And um, we have with us a small guest. And uh, I think she's the youngest. I think, uh, yeah, I think she's the youngest child uh, uh, today in the cafe. Uh, if you don't mind, can we start with her? She's just five years old girl, five or six years old girl. Can we start from her? Well, yes, if, if that's best, I thought it would be best to put a second, but so she was confident by the time we came, but it, Devesha, do you want to go first? Would you like to go first? Yes! In that case, you are first. Please tell your story. Okay. Thank you. It's Hello! Good evening, MJ. Good evening. I am Shivacha Harder of Class KG2. Student of Sandeep School Program 4 from Varanasi, India. Today, I am going to narrate the story named The Princess and the Frog. It is taken from the popular German folk story and later on Disney Pictures produced a movie named The Princess and the Frog. Mommy, so, once upon a time there was a brave and the honest king who had one daughter. She was very beautiful. On her birthday, her father gifted her a golden ball. She loved the ball so much that she spent time playing with it and also kept it with her even when she went out of the palace. So, do you know what happened? Yes. Please tell me yes. Okay. So, one day she was playing with the ball in the garden. As she was tossing the ball high in the Air, all of a sudden, the frog, the ball went so high that she couldn't catch it. And it went inside the pond and sank down. But as the princess loved her ball, she started to cry. What happened, dear princess? Why are you crying? She heard a croaking voice. She saw a frog sitting on the rock of the pond. Why are you crying, dear princess? She was surprised to see a talking frog. The frog asked again, Why are you crying? The princess told that her father had 
gifted her a golden ball on her birthday, but it went inside the pond and sank down. The frog said, Okay, dear princess, I will bring the ball back, but you have to make a promise that you will let me to eat from your plate, you will let me to sleep in your bed, and you shall promise me to be my friend. Promise me, dear princess. The princess said, Okay, okay, I agree to it, but please bring my ball back. So the frog went inside the pond. After some time, the frog came back with the ball. As the princess got her ball, she ran towards the palace. The frog said, Be a princess, you forgot your promise that you will be my friend and let me come in. But the princess didn't reply. And Continue running towards the palace. The next morning, when the princess and her father were having the royal breakfast, as they were starting to eat it, they heard a knock at the door. Duck, duck, duck. As the servants opened the door, the, the princess was surprised to see the frog. And the frog entered the room and said, Dear princess, you forgot to promise that you will be my friend and let me eat from your plate. So here I am. As the king came to know about everything, he scolded the princess for breaking her promise. So the princess took the frog to the breakfast table and made him eat from her plate. Then she took the frog to the bedroom and threw him to the corner of the bed. Oh! What happened? The frog changed into a handsome prince. The princess was surprised to see that. And and slowly, slowly moved towards him. The priest said that many, many years ago, an evil witch has spelled the evil spell on him and made him a frog. And when he bade to free him from her spell, she said, she said that only the spell will end. When the princess will let him to eat from her plate, sleep in her bed, and be her friend. At last, they married each. At last, they married each other and lived happily ever after. The moral of the story is: we should keep our promises. Thank you and this is the end of my story. Fantastic. Yes, that's wonderful. Uh, David, uh, David is sharing the stickers. So, Becha, can you see at the back side of David? It's amazing. Yeah, wonderful. That's, that's, that's so amazing. And wonderful picture. You will come and visit us again, won't you? Please come again and tell another story. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Before I go on, Lemay's, have I got your name right? Lemay's. Hello. Hello. Where are you? Uh, I, I'm from Gaza. In that case, it's wonderful, but I'm going to put you on next because I know the internet in Gaza sometimes collapses. So, have you got a story for us tonight, Lemay? Well, Hello, my name is Lamisa Hindi. Hello, my name is Lamisa Hindi. I'm 11 years old. My teacher, is Sahar Siam, invited me to the scarf. I will tell you about Joha's story. 
In a hot day, Jaha walked in the desert. He didn't have food or water. From afar, he saw a man eating food and drinking water. He became happy and got close to the man. He recognized the man. The man was Saleh. You have said, peace be upon you. Saleh replied, peace be upon you too. You have thought that Saleh did not say to him, join me, but he didn't do so. Saleh asked Juha about the situation of his wife Salma, his son Zed, his dog, his camel, and his house. Juha said, peace be upon you. Oh. Juha Saleh said, how is my dog? Juha said, your dog is strong and his friend is the lion. Juha, Juha waited for Saleh to say, join me, but he didn't do so. Saleh, Saleh said, how is my wife Salma? You have said, your wife Salma isn't the generous woman and isn't the good health. You have waited for Saleh to say, join me, but he didn't do so. Saleh, Saleh continued eating and said, and how is my, and how is my son Zed? You have said, your son Zed isn't the good health. So I waited for Saleh to say, join me. But he didn't do so. So he ate a mouthful and said, How is my and how is my camel? You have said your camel, your camel is strong and is in the good health. After all this question, you have became angry because Saleh did not say to him, Please join me. For this reason, you have source of trick. A skill dog passed by. Saleh walked at the dog and said, ha 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 ha, there is no dog like mine. You have said, yes, if your dog lived, he would become the king of dogs. Saleh said, did my dog die? You have said, yes, he had eaten a piece of meat of your camel and it's collect its throat, so he died. Saleh screamed and said, did my camel die? You have said, yes, it has fallen into the grave of your wife and it broke its neck. Salah screamed and Salah screamed and said, did my wife die? You have said, yes, she died of sadness because her son Zed died. The house had collapsed on him. Salah cried. He forgot the food and ran in the desert like a madman and you have took the food. Thank you. Thank you. What a great trickster story. <laughs> Fantastic. So, we've, the, let me, you will join us again on another week, won't you? you okay. bring, us more, bring us more stories like that. Fantastic. Thank you, Lamais. That was wonderful. And please say hello from us to your teacher, Saha Siam. Wonderful storytelling. Thank so, you. Let's go to the order now before India has to go to sleep. So we go Erica, Princess D, and then we'll go to Radia in Nigeria, then we'll go to Stolly, then we'll go to Elsa. So oh, we're really glad to have you back from where, whichever island you were, you went up to tell stories on. So Erica, have you got a story for us? Yes, John Rowe. Oh, please tell it. I'm Erica. I'm from the capital of India, Delhi. And my story name is The Lamb and the Wolf. One day, a lamb was eat, eating sweet grass mm. oh, away from the flock of sheep. From the flock of sheep, she didn't notice a wolf was walking near to her. When she saw the wolf, she was screaming, "Please don't eat me! You can wait for a while." Because I, because my stomach is full of grass, you can wait for a while to make my meat taste 
to make to make my meat taste much better. The wolf agreed. My my food will be digested quickly if you let me dance. The wolf agreed. When the lamb was dancing, she had an she had a new idea. She said to the wolf, "I can dance faster if you will hold my if you will hold my bell and ring it so hard." The wolf took the bell and took the bell and started to ring so hard. The sheep heard heard the voice. Heard the ring and and ran quickly to save the lamb's life. So the moral of the story is: use your smartness. Thank you. The end. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, Fantastic. Well done. So we've got. We've had. Thank you, John. Far. Thank you, Auntie. We've had an amazing number number of tellers. Papetcha, who 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 started with us, which is a wonderful. Then Princess D. No, we haven't had Princess D. Then Lemay's, um, and then Erica. I haven't forgotten anyone that's told, have I? That that's just Baba C. It's confusing me. So Betcha is the five-year-old. Oh. You see, Baba C does not believe you're five years old. You told so well he did not believe you were only five years old. And my so bad. He got me we're very good. confused in his messages. <laughs> my Erica, apologies. You, as Hi. always, are amazing. So we're now going over to... Yeah, she, she's India? just... She uh, she's just five years old and she is studying in upper KG, kindergarten, oh. second level, upper KG, and oh. she's a very 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 bright student, and uh, that is why we have asked her to just come the come and join the cafe and narrate a beautiful and to you know um, today she narrated the same story in the classroom and it. Came up very well, and uh, I so we thought, why don't uh, she come and join the cafe and narrate the same story? And she did very well. Well done, Subhiksha. Keep up the good work. Thank you, ma'am. Fantastic, and Lemay's, you're amazing. And Erica, it is so good to have you back. So we are now going. She's been, I keep saying, I keep announcing her and then I put someone else on. So I'm not going to do it again. Put your hands together, please, and welcome Princess D. Davija. Can you tell us a story? Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Davija. And today I'm here with another story. So let's start. Once upon a time, there lived an old lady. She was carrying medicines for her young daughter who lived on that, on that mountain. She was climbing, 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 climbing. And there she met a wolf. The wolf says, I'm very hungry. I want to eat you. The old lady was too afraid. She says, my, my young daughter is so sick. So I'm going to the mountain to give her the medicines. Otherwise, she'll die. So then they will say, okay, remember, when you come back, I'm going to eat you. So the wolf ran. And the old lady continued walking, walking, walking. When she reached to her house, to her daughter's house, she explained everything to her. The old lady was too afraid. The, her daughter says, No worries, I'm going to put you inside a drum so that 
He went and roll, 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 and tumble down to her house. So she does the same. And then he pushes her mom down. And she tumbles, 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 tumbles. Again, they both games. And now you that old lady. The mouth I want to eat you. The old lady says, I can come out. Don't know the code. The past code. When? When, 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 when? When the bull started thinking. Then the old lady pushes the drum again and sits inside it and then rolls down, down, down. When the bull started chasing the old lady, she falls down and dies. And the old lady reaches her destination. So the moral of the story is, whenever we are in trouble, we should not lose hope and be courageous and face the situation with a great courage. Thank you. The end. I think the lesson for the wolf is don't mess with old ladies. <laughs> right. We are now leaving yeah, India buddy. on our magic carpet. That was fantastic, Princess D, as always. So we are now leaving India on our magic carpet. Ali is in charge. Finest magic carpet pilot in the whole world. And... He's taking us down south. We're going, we're going. And I'm dropping off in Nigeria to see my friend Radia. Have you a story for us, Radia? Good night, everyone. Today, the name of my story is How Fire and Rain Became Enemies. Long, long ago, there was a chief in who ruled a big land. He had a very beautiful princess daughter. Many men wanted to marry the princess, but the chief said they are not very good for her. Fire and Rain wanted to marry her too. Fire went to the king and said, Can I marry your daughter? He said, So, and the king said, Yes, 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 you can. And, and the rain went to the princess and said, Princess, can I marry you? And so, so, both fire and, and, and so the princess came to her father and said, and the, and the chief said, my daughter, fire is going to marry you next and the day after tomorrow. No, but I promised rain that he would Okay, so. Fire and rain came to the king too. The person who can have my daughter the win is the winner of the race. So the next day they had the race. Many people were, were there. Many people were saying fire will win, and others said rain will win. And then the race began. Rain wasn't around. Fire was. The wind helped him to go very fast. When fire was about to get to the finish line, the rain, the, it started raining and the rain put out the fire. And people say, rain is the winner. Rain is the winner. And so, from that, and, and the, the chief gave rain to his daughter. The, and, and after that, fire and rain became enemies.
and fantastic and uh and i see you've got your own princess crown on you you're a royal today you're a royal person today uh <laughs> fantastic and we go from one headgear to another we now get north we're on our on, we're leaving the warmth of nigeria we're going to it's crisp and well as a with maybe maybe the carpet will freeze on this journey but i think we're going to wales next where crispy way it's very crisp in wales tonight there'll be a frost in the morning well but we go with from the magnificent he he headgear of radia or princess radia to the magnificent he headgear of prince Solly. Sonny, have you got a story for us? Yes, thank you. And yes, it is cold. We've had a frost four nights in a row now. <laughs> um, okay, so my story today is Beowulf. Um, and of it. <laughs> sorry if my iPad keeps going weird. It's very low on battery. Fantastic. Please start. Okay. Um, my story today is Beowulf. So, once, once far, far back, like in a land far, far away, there lived a king named Hrothgar. Every day, every evening, the king looked out upon the hall he had built and all the land he had conquered, all beautiful and unmarked. But he, if, only, if only he'd known that it was not unmarked at all. In a swamp just on the border of his land, there lived a terrifying troll named Grendel. Grendel hated Hrothgar and his hall and all his friends and all the people who lived in his land, or la and laughing and dancing in happiness in any way. And one night, Grendel swept out of his swamp and slid through the forest and over the mountains and across the hills to where Hrothgar lived. He tore down the door of the hall and devoured the nearest man to him. There was nothing the men could do. He returned night after night to gobble up more and more and more. News of the trolls' treacherous ways spread far and wide until they came to the ears of a mighty warrior king called Beowulf, whose power was unmatched. Luckily, Beowulf decided to help and voyage for days and nights and days and nights over seas and mountains and rivers and forests marshes and fields and hills until he reached Hrothgar's hall. He was met by grateful men and a tremendous feast. The feast lasted all through the night, but down in the swamp, Grendel heard the men laughing and shouting. He was enraged. He hated it when they had feasts. And so, sweeping out of the swamp. He crept through the woods and over the hills. He crept up to the door of the hall and suddenly with a tremendous crash, it fell down through its hinges. And there stood the ogre, tall and menacing. And as he, and he thrust his arm through the door and grabbed the nearest man to him. But this is no ordinary man. This is Beowulf. Beowulf hung on to Grendel with a grip of iron. And Grendel was confused and swung his arm around. And Beowulf pulled in the opposite direction. There was an enormous wrenching sound. <laughs> Grendel's arm was torn from its socket. Howling and roaring in pain, in the monster ran over the hills and through the forests, back to his swamp. Beowulf was reward, rewarded with 
weapons and jewels and furs and gold and silver. Many feasts came after that. The end. Amazing. Uh, when you said you were going to do the story about Beowulf, I kind of had this vision of us all going to bed at midnight. Uh, uh, but you, 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 you managed to, you managed to ha do a, a, a really succinct story, and I especially like the ripping off of the arm. There's, uh, it, with that. <laughs> <laughs> magnificent well told sorry well told well we're going to we're going to leap on we're going to leap on our magic carpet wrap up well because we're going north to edinburgh um and in her i i can see the heart behind in her university room uh we have now baba c is happy because elsa's back He's, he's, he's been miserable for weeks. And, uh, the, the, so, <laughs> but we've been hearing about you from people who were, went to, uh, went to the, uh, to, uh, festivals on various islands where you were performing. I don't know whether you were performing literally or virtually, but you were there. So, ladies and gentlemen, could we please put our hands together and welcome back? Welcome back, Elsa Dixon. Hello, it's so nice to be back. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, it's been a ridiculously long amount of time. There was, it was the Edinburgh International Storytelling Festival, which was here, and I had about four shows going on there, and it was just mad. And then I literally, I got on a plane and I flew to Orkney, which was amazing. Like, I got on a plane, it was so cool. Um, and told stories there for like a week, also while trying to do a university degree. And now I've just sort of been living in the library, trying to do midterms and write essays for like the rest of my life and drinking lots and lots and lots of coffee and trying not to have like a bit of a breakdown, but I'm back, I'm back. I've got no idea what story I should tell. I shouldn't, um, shouldn't say that. Let's think, I should probably have thought of this while everyone else was telling their wonderful stories. Um, let's go with this one because it's a winter story. Um, I've probably told it before, but I always like hearing a story again. So we're gonna go with this one. And this story begins, as all the best stories do, a long time ago. A long time ago in the Highlands of Scotland, and in the Highlands of Scotland there was a wee cottage. And it was nestled by the edge of a great loch, by the foot of a great mountain. And in that cottage there lived a crofter. Now crofter is a farmer, and he lived alone. His parents had passed away a few years before they need to never marry. So it was just him, him and his horse. And he loved his horse because his horse was a bit of company for him and his horse would plough the fields and get in the harvest and do all the things a horse has to do on the farm. And he had a good life for a while. And it was a night like today. Well, at least a night like today in Edinburgh here, it's been cold today and a bit dark and overcast and there's a bit of a nip in the air. And it was on a day like that, that when winter was just beginning to draw in, that his horse fell sick. And his horse didn't get better, he got sicker and sicker and sicker, until eventually, on the first day of winter, when the snow was falling thick about the cottage, the horse died. And now the crofter was sad, the crofter was sad because well, his horse, his companion had died, but he didn't know what he was going to do next year. He was worried. His horse ploughed this field. His horse helped him in the farm. What was he going to do without his horse? He couldn't afford to buy another. And he grew more and more worried, and more and more anxious each passing day as the winter drew on and on and on. Until one day, when he was out for a walk, out for a walk beside the loch, 
when he saw an old woman walking along. And now, he didn't normally see people around this loch. Loch, the great lake, the great deep lake. Um, because this lake, it was rumoured that a monster lurked at the bottom of it. Some people said that when people went for a walk by the edge, they'd be drawn down, down into the depths of the loch and they'd float up later, maybe their bones, maybe just their spleen or their kidney would bob up along the water a few months later. And nobody quite knew what it was, but our crofter, he wasn't a suspicious man, so he was out walking. They saw an old woman. And they stopped and they had a conversation and he, was, and he um, had a pancake. He had a bit of a bannock in his pocket and he said, would you like to share it with me? And he did. And they sat down by the side of the loch and they ate together. And when they got up to leave, the old woman said, thank you. Thank you for sharing your food with me. Thank you for your time. And she took some salt from her pocket. And she gave it to him and she said, remember, salt can kill as well as cure. Well, our crofter, he knew that sometimes old women got it a little bit strange as time wore on. So he took the salt and he put it in his pocket and he thought no more about it until the next time he came across the old woman. One starry night, one crisp, clear, starry winter night when he was sitting watching the stars outside his cottage and he saw the old woman walk along and he called her in, called her into his fire, to his fireside out of the cold and they sat there and they shared songs and stories and tunes and riddles all night long and when dawn broke above the mountains she rose to go and she gave him the shawl from about her shoulders and she said cloth can cover more than skin and the crofter, he knew that the old woman was a little bit strange by this point. So he put the shawl in his pocket and they went their separate ways and he didn't see her again until it was almost spring. And by this time he was really worried. He was terribly worried because he still, he didn't have a horse. He did not know how he was going to plow the fields and plant his crops the next season. So he saw the old woman and he decided that he was going to do something nice for this old woman. So he got peat, he got peat, stacks of peat, which is sort of like big turfs that he kept behind inside your fire, you burn them. Um, and he brought a stack of peat, the old woman. And now the old woman's cottage, it was a bare cottage. It was an empty cottage. It, she didn't have much firewood, didn't have much peat. She didn't have much of anything, to be honest. But hanging on a hook on the wall, was an old bridle of a horse and it must once have been a fine bridle. There were bits of embroidery that were faded and worn. There was a great iron bit that was rusted and it was covered in dust, but once it must have been a fine thing. And as they began to part, the old woman took the bridle down from the hut and she passed it to him and she said, thank you for the peat and for your company. Now remember, Iron can make more than a pot. Now that was possibly the weirdest thing that he'd heard from this old woman so far, but he was a polite young man. So he put it in his pocket and away he went. And it was a few nights later, the crofter couldn't sleep. He just couldn't, he tossed and he turned and he turned and he tossed, but he could not sleep. And all he did was hear the crashing of the waves, the blue blowing of the wind and he thought a oh, walk might do him good, might tire him out, might get his mind off his worries. So he walked down out of his cottage down to the edge of the loch and he stood there looking as the wind blew from east to west, as the waves bucked beneath and billowed east to west. And as he stood there he noticed something strange even though the wind still blew in the same direction, even though the trees were billowing and bending beneath the wind, the waves were starting to go in the opposite direction. And they got larger 
and larger and larger, great white crested waves, great huge waves that seemed to come out of the loch towards him when out of the water came a great black stallion, a kelpie, a kelpie, a water horse, those terrible creatures that draw you down to the bottom of the loch that will try and make you stick onto them and you, ca you can't do anything, they will take you down, they will drown you. And the man, oh, he felt this feeling inside his heart, a feeling he never felt before. And he knew the only thing in the world he wanted to do was to ride that horse. He couldn't, he couldn't think of anything else. That was the only thing he wanted to do. And he started to run towards it. When he felt the heavy weight of the bridle bouncing against his thigh in his pocket, and he remembered the words of the old woman, and he remembered the old stories of the Kelpies. He stopped and he used his brain and he thought. So he got close to the Kelpie. He flung the woman's shawl over the Kelpie's back and leapt upon it. And he wasn't stuck to the Kelpie's flag. Normally you would, normally your legs would be fused on, but this time he wasn't. And the Kelpie noticed what he'd done and he grew furious. They began to and rear and neigh up and the uh, crofter caught hold of the mane in his two fists but the mane that great hanks of hair turned to serpents beneath his fingers and twisted and turned and spat and hissed at his face and the crofter remembered the words of the old woman and he got the salt from his pocket and dashed it at the mane and it turned back to hair in his hands and now the kelpie it was furious and it began to run towards the loch but the crofter took the bridle from his pocket and forced the iron bit beneath the Kelpie's teeth. And suddenly all the fight left that Kelpie. And it let itself be led up to the cottage. And it was used like a plough horse all that year. And it did the work of five horses. He, he could, the crofter even managed to help out the other farms and had a good stack of silver coins by the end of the year. But when winter came around, when it was a day like today once again, when the wind started to blow and the snow started to fall, one crisp moonlit night, the crofter took the kelpie down the edge of the loch, took the bridle from between its teeth and watched as it galloped back into the waves. But although the kelpie can be tamed for a while, it's always a wild thing. And that is the story, more or less, of the Kelpie of Scotland. Whoa, and so what a fantastic story to finish on. And in our traditional way, we will go around all the young people and ask, the, so we have, we've got two, two people from India and it's very late there. So we're going to go to them first. So, Pacha, did you enjoy yourself? I um, Yeah. No, I can't hear you. The, you. You enjoyed yourself. And you'll come back, won't you, Sapecha? And Princess D, what did you think of tonight? You're, you're muted, Sapecha. Princess D, she left as yes. she has a school in the morning, so she left. That's perfectly fine. You can speak for her. Oh. What, what, what did you think of all the young tellers tonight? They were I very thought. good. They were very good. And uh, I must say they were excellent. And the selection of story was amazing. And I, I really enjoyed. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. To all the young tellers, I will I will join them soon. I will join them on next Tuesday. Thank you. And oh, I like that. I like that. I like your hair piece, the poacher. You. <laughs> yeah. Okay, she's arguing with her mum. Um, <laughs> Elsa. Subicha? So, uh, uh, just a moment, Subecha, you wish to say something? 
do you want to say something to all didis yes these all stories were wonderful as i did a once a good story thank you thank you okay now ha sorry yeah okay now subhicha it's too late and tomorrow we have to go to school also okay so now it's time to leave the meeting and next tuesday we'll see you okay chalo bye bye take care everybody bye bye also what did you think of tonight and and everyone it was really lovely it's so nice to be back um everybody told really lovely stories radya always love your stories also you've got a crown like that's so cool love it um subhicha your story was wonderful oh thank you that means a lot that's so sweet of you your story was wonderful too and i'm really glad you were here solly as well i was really hoping you'd be here because i saw you once and then i wasn't here for a few weeks and then i saw you again and you'd like massively improved and i was like hmm is solly going to have like massively improved again but he couldn't have improved that much but yeah you improved that much you like just massively improved it and i love beowulf like i fell in love with the my copy of like the shamus heeny translation is like annotated and has like a zillion like bits in it because i've read it yeah it it's it, it it's a thing for me and you told it really really well so i i love that and everybody else who's not here also lovely stories ah uh, radia what have you got to say radia do you want to say something <laughs> okay sorry what have you got to say to everybody i love all the stories <laughs> thank you thank you uh, i like story too everyone story is the best uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry what have you got to say for yourself or to everyone else um i i really enjoyed it i love listening to all the stories from around the world um it is and I, i love hearing them all Um I really like the way you told the princess and the frog. Um I thought that was really nice for really. Um and yeah. Brilliant. And I think we've managed to get India to bed. Uh <laughs> so they can get up at school tomorrow. Ali, what do you think of tonight? <laughs> Ali, unmute yourself. <laughs> Going to deal with a guest, David. What amazing night! It's so nice. Thank ah, you for everyone. Brilliant, and thank you, thank you for, uh, thank you for. Uh, is it that cold? You've got a fur collar on. Yes, John. Is it very cold tonight there? Yeah, it's cold. Oh, good job! I left. It's there. windy and it's cold. Oh well, I left on the right day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah. Okay. Right. We'll hear from David. Yeah, it was absolutely magical as I've got written here. Magical evening, a very beautiful set of stories from so many parts of the world. Thank you Solly for the briefest and most brutal version of Beowulf and Subetcha was amazing 5 years old what a talent and Elsha as always well wow, that was that was just, that was so enchanting the kelpie and the and the magic that saved him that's just poor how can you escape from a kelpie that's absolutely extraordinary i just want to say um that it, it's actually a really special day for me as well connected to the world storytelling cafe because my project around the world in 88 tales the last story share was this morning uh so the 88th tale got told this morning and many people are involved in uh, in this i mean for example divija put a story onto the um onto the padlet that goes with the project a wonderful story and well rashidat who is um radia's mum 
was one of the storytellers. John Rowe was one of the storytellers. Baba C was one of the storytellers. Many of the storytellers I've got to know through the World Storytelling Cafe, like Georgiana, or I could list a whole, whole lot of people. Well, J Jackie Ross, who you all know, many, many people have shared stories. And I just want to uh, extend an invitation to everybody who's watching this from the recording or later, because on Sunday, if you look in the chat, I've just written on Sunday, there's a celebration for everybody to come and meet the storytellers and to mark the end of what's been an extraordinary uh, six months of sharing stories all around the world. So that's a, a shameless plug, but I hope that you do join uh, us. Uh, and they'll show be fantastic what, if you can what, come as well. What time is that, David? It's 3 p.m. UK time on Sunday. And um, what's going to happen, I'll, I'll talk about the project. You can meet storytellers who've told stories and we'll go into breakout rooms and share a story and then we'll come back together and we'll have a massive final celebration, talk about what the project means to us all. And uh, it certainly meant the world to me and I think a lot to many of the people involved. So, uh, so come along on Sunday. And it's very, very closely linked to my friends here at this cafe. Well, thank you. And thank you for linking it all up, David. You, and uh, I'm now going to go across to Washington, D.C. For, 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 for a word. Uh, <laughs> John Rowe, I love you more and more each time we engage. <laughs> David, I love your background. I, I put in the, in the uh, chat that you were showing off, and then I put, don't stop. I know, right? I saw it. <laughs> right. So all the young tellers, uh, especially those who are who had to go to bed, Sunday just passed. We had a magnificent story around with the adults. And I didn't think it could get much better than that until today. We had a story round of, 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 that was infused with energy and techniques and expressions and, and special effects. <laughs> Rip that arm off. That was alarming. You know, and sorry, before I forget. Before I forget, I saw that shelf of wands behind you. No wonder you are a wonderful storyteller. Yeah, okay. Y'all yeah, get that later. Anyhow, um, I love them all. And Sully, you becoming better and better and bolder and bolder. Don't stop. Elsa, you're like a niece to me. And I come from a family of people that love to tell stories. You are. I love you telling stories, but I got to put you on the spot. Can we have just a little bit of, and if not, I understand, but just a little bit of. I've not got it set up for um, harp times, but hopefully it'll work. <laughs> I'm considering this an early Kwanzaa present. I celebrate Kwanzaa. That takes place later in December. But that was a wonderful Kwanzaa present. In fact, today has been a wonderful Kwanzaa present. So to all the storytellers, especially those 18 and younger, uh, Asante Sana, uh, thank you very much. Vazuri Sana, well done, well done, well done. And Elsa, so glad to have you back. And whenever you can jump in here with us. And I know soon you'll be with the... Um, adults in the room no 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 i i i i dropped i i i put a few drops of magic in her drink so she never gets to a 19th birthday <laughs> yeah. that might in january 21st studies. folks sorry that's my that's no. my time of departure oh 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 and that reminds me to all the storytellers never apologize for retelling a story for a story well told is worth retelling. You know, well, you know, well, it's just like well, a favorite I, meal. Okay, well, I think I, I covered everything. I think okay, I think you covered everything. With next this Friday, we have the amazing Dawn Ellis telling stories for children. Next, uh, that's six o'clock GMT. Uh, next Tuesday, 
obviously, it will be International Young Tellers again. Radia, hope to see you there. Sully, hope to see you there. I hope to see you there. And the adults that are listening, please pop in to support everyone. For now, and hopefully by next week, I've got a new webcam, although the camera is much better on this one. The microphone is rubbish, and the microphone is much more important. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, till next week. Bye, everyone. If you guys don't see me Friday, it's because I'm recovering from Thanksgiving celebrations, which is Thursday here in the States. And I come from a family that loves to cook, and adult beverages will be served. <laughs> okay, see you all, bye. Until the next time, to be continued. Solly, Solly, Solly. <laughs> David, don't forget to send me the, re, uh, the, the, the information again. All right. Uh, I, will Sala, do right this. I will do that. I will do Thank that you. without fail. Because I got to get on that. A lot of things have been happening. My uh, GoFundMe is going along very well. Okay. And uh, yeah, and I've had all these deadlines I have to meet for other things. And that's coming together too, including a reference that I've got to write today uh, for somebody else. But I'm enjoying it. Uh, and you and I need to have a little talk because I can learn a lot from you. But I need to ask you a couple of questions uh, off camera. But we'll talk. Thank you very much. Good, sir. Cheers. Cheers. Rashidat, are you there? Radia's mum, are you there? Is your mum there? Your mum is not your mum is not there, Radia. Yes. Okay. Please tell your mum I would like to see her on Sunday. Okay? Okay. All right. Bye bye then. Bye. Right. Everyone take bye -bye. care. To be bye. continued.